First, some clarification. There's two versions of Dark Souls 2, the original release and Scholar of the First Sin. There were also two different versions of Dark Souls 1, but that didn't really matter for the previous challenge. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to use Scholar of the First Sin, as it's the most recent and arguably most complete version of the game, and the one Namco Bandai intends for you to purchase. Most of what I say can apply to either version regardless, but it should be known that if you pre-ordered Dark Souls 2 original release, you get some special weapons and shields, which could slightly modify the route you take to do this challenge, but we'll get to that later. We're going to start by ignoring everything and running straight to the old ladies. Name your character and choose your class. Unlike Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 2's stats are actually properly balanced, meaning you can reach the max level of 838 with any of the classes. For my case, I'll be using the Cleric because, as with the first video, I'm looking for the best case scenario, and they start with the highest soul level of 14, meaning we need to gain the least number of souls using it. If you were wanting this challenge to take as long as possible, obviously you'd want to choose a Deprived as they start at soul level 1. If you want my personal recommendation of what class you should choose, I'd say either a Warrior since they start off with a shield, meaning you could skip one of our actions later on. Also worth considering is the Knight, since they have the highest vigor, making them somewhat more forgiving of mistakes, or the Explorer, since they have the highest adaptability of any of the starting classes, making dodging a bit more viable. I think it's unlikely that you'll be able to skip a shield even with their adaptability in mind, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Speaking of adaptability though, as a Cleric we're going to have the next to lowest adaptability of any of the starting classes besides the Bandit. This isn't too much of an issue, as dodging won't be something we're necessarily going to do much, but just bear that in mind. On the plus side, we get a healing miracle, which is very handy if you happen to lose a lot of health and can get one off. But moving on, grab a bonfire ascetic as your starting gift and exit character creation. One nice thing about Dark Souls 2 is that whenever you rest at a bonfire, your weapon is repaired, so long as it hasn't broken. This is handy as we won't have to worry about farming weapons like we did in Dark Souls 1. Since we're a cleric, to reach max level we're going to need 407,396,448 souls. Yes, you heard that right. 407 million! With an M! That's not too terrible all things considered. That's like one fourth of Dark Souls 1's requirement. There's a lot of preliminary souls we can get though, and we've got a lot to do. So strap in folks, this is going to be a long one. Pick up the torch and the soul of the lost undead for 200 souls. We're going to go to the first fog gate on the left, lighting all the sconces on the way. I'm just going to avoid enemies like I did in the first video, but kill them if you want. I'm going to continue on until the end where I'm going to kick down the ladder and ignore Dinah and Tilo for now. Drop down to the below ledge and collect the soul of a nameless soldier for 800 souls. Now we're done and things betwixt, for now. So, <clears throat> here's the thing, Dark Souls 2 is kind of unique. Starting in this game and only this game, From Software made it so that after killing enemies a certain number of times, they'll begin to despawn, making this challenge impossible unless we bend the rules a bit. We have to go to Majula. Why? Because in Majula lies the Company of Champions, which makes it so that enemies no longer despawn. I know, I know, I don't like it either, but that's just how it is. Now, since we have to go to Majula anyway, I'm going to make an executive decision and say everything in Majula is free reign so long as we don't leave this main hub. With that in mind, we've got a few things to do here. First we're going to collect another soul of a nameless soldier and pop it for an additional 800 souls. Now go speak to Malin. Malin sells some shields, which is quite handy as we're going to need one. Buy the Silver Eagle Kite Shield. It has a 90% damage reduction for physical attacks. Once you've gotten everything you want, we're going to kill him. Malin drops the Seldora set, all of which increases the number of souls we get by a certain percentage. With all the armor worn, we get a 22.5% boost. Definitely worthwhile. We'll also get 900 souls from him. Next, I'm going to go speak to Crestfallen Saldan. He'll give us a ring called the Blue Seal if we join the Blue Sentinels. This ring increases our HP by 3%. A minor increase, but why not, right? Now you have two choices. You can either kill Saldan to get the Ring of Steel Protection, or die 100 times and speak to him to obtain it. For the sake of brevity, and for more souls, I'm going to kill him for it, getting 994 souls while I'm at it. 
The Ring of Steel Protection gives us a defense boost of 50. I'm also going to get the Estus Flask from the Emerald Herald and upgrade it while I'm here. Now I'll finally go and enter the Company of Champions. Now we're going to return to things betwixt. Go to the rightmost fog gate. Go ahead and light up all the sconces you can get to, ending with the one in the middle structure. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, I know Fino, he's a stand-up guy, he's above engaging in some trickery. <laughs> well, you're wrong. Go ahead and drop your FPS down to 20. Jump over this ledge. Hey, look at that, no fragrant branch of your required. Light up the sconce, do this jump to avoid the basilisk pit, go through the fog door, go over here, light up the sconce, kick down the bridge, and light up this final sconce. Now we've got a black phantom to fight. Cheese it with gravity for 3,107 souls. Speaking of cheesing with gravity, lure these two ogres over to the wooden bridge you kicked down. Bait out the back slam or the butt slam and they'll fall right off, granting you 1,243 souls each. It should be noted that the ogre counts as a special enemy, meaning that even with the company of champions, they won't be respawning. That black phantom we killed also won't be returning until we use the bonfire ascetic. Now go down and fight the pursuer. Hope your parry game is on point. Kill the pursuer, get 7,458 souls. Go to the opening area of things betwixt. We'll run over to the ogre up the hidden path and kill him. It might take a bit longer than you're used to. This is because the company of champions grants enemies more HP and around 20% damage resistance. Luckily, they're a very easy enemy to kill. Doing so will give us another 1,243 souls, as well as the stone ring. This reduces enemy poise. I don't think it really affects what we're going to be doing, but hell, you have two extra ring slots. I don't see a reason not to use it. Now we're going to drop down the waterfall and grab the small, smooth, and silky stone. Then go back to the bonfire and use the bonfire ascetic. The bonfire ascetic puts the zone of whatever bonfire you use it at into New Game Plus. So while enemies will now be harder, they're also going to drop more souls per kill. It also replaces any items you picked up, so go ahead and grab the soul of a lost undead for another 200 souls. For things betwixt, the ascetic is also going to spawn a few black phantoms, which will be very useful. Let's go back and kill the ogre again. Now he'll drop us 2,486 souls. Drop down the waterfall again for three smooth and sulky stones. Go back to the bonfire. If you continue ahead, you'll see a new black phantom with a crossbow spawned on the bridge because we're in New Game Plus. Go up and kill it. An extra 1,988 souls. Nice. This black phantom also unfortunately won't respawn, so no farming this guy. Light up all the sconces a second time. Kill the black phantom again. 6,215 souls. Now go kill the two ogres on the beach again. 2,486 souls each. Pursuer again. Parry his ass. 14,916 souls. Climb up the ladder to Dinah and Tilo. Using the stones you collected, you have a chance of getting the soul of a proud knight, which will grant you 2,000 souls each. As this is under the guise of this being the best case scenario, we'll say you're extraordinarily lucky and you get it all four times for a total of 8,000 souls. Realistically though, you'll have to save scum to do this. Now get the soul of a nameless soldier for another 800 souls. Wow, that was a lot of setup. Now it's time for what I've been putting off, the actual grinding. Rest at the bonfire, go back towards the starting area and upon passing this threshold, two black phantoms will spawn. These phantoms will continue to spawn indefinitely since we're in the company of champions. Run past them and go up to this falconer. These falconers are also newly spawned because of the bonfire ascetic. Anyway, lure them back and over to this cliff. There's a tree here that you can just walk around. Hold the dual wield button and dual wield your offhand item. In this case, it's the silver eagle kite shield. The enemies have a hard time getting around this tree. Once they're around it and attacking, use the shield to protect yourself from their attacks and when the time is right, bump them off. You can get the black phantoms and usually just one of the falconers. The other falconers usually get bored and run back. Occasionally you'll get a second one, but usually not. In fact, I've only ever had one time where the second falconer sticks around, so I'm just going to say that you get one falconer doing this. I know it's best case scenario, but this is so extremely rare that I'm not comfortable including the second one into the figure. So the two black phantoms and the one falconer. Altogether, that's 1,540 souls per run. So now we have to time it. Before you do your attempts, make sure to open the two doors to the old lady's hut. Doing so will save you time as they'll stay open as long as you don't die. 
We're going to run past the two black phantoms and get the attention of the falconer. Then it's simply a matter of not getting hit as we head towards the tree. Be careful especially of the falconer's falcon as it is capable of one-shotting you. Now that we're at the tree, we just need to knock the enemies off. You'll probably have to bait a couple of attacks from the black phantoms, then you can knock them off. It's possible that the falconer will fall off of his own accord after a couple of attacks, but if not, go ahead and knock him off with your shield as well. After that, we just need to run back to the bonfire. Doing all of this will take about a minute and a half, but that's about it. Now, as with the previous video, it's time for the math. Four hundred seven million three hundred ninety six thousand four hundred forty eight souls minus fifty six thousand sixty five souls from everything we did prior to the grind. That's four hundred seven million three hundred forty thousand three hundred eighty three souls. Every run of the grind section we do will give us one thousand five hundred forty souls. Multiply that by forty, and that gives us the number of souls per hour, which is sixty one thousand six hundred. So dividing four hundred seven million three hundred forty thousand three hundred eighty three by sixty one thousand six hundred, we get six thousand six hundred thirteen hours to complete this challenge with rounding. That's a little under two hundred seventy six days, forty weeks, nine months, and a little over three fourths of a year. Wow, compared to Dark Souls one, that's not too bad, right? Now, granted, that's still nine months of constant gameplay. If we assumed you did it eight hours per day, that's 2.3 years. That's pretty bad, but nowhere near Dark Souls 1's figure of 55 years. I could actually see someone possibly taking this challenge on. Someone, not me. Well, that's about it. Dark Souls 2 turned out to be a lot more trouble than I thought. Originally, I thought it was just going to be a matter of grinding from the start, but once I realized we'd have to go to Majula and that there was a way to jump over that ledge, it opened up a lot more possibilities. For better or for worse. Thanks once again to Grind God and Illusory Wall for being an inspiration for this video. I'd also like to thank Gravy Zombie for helping me out with some testing for this video. He's a lot more knowledgeable about Dark Souls 2 than I am, so that was a big help. Alright, well that wraps this one up. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.